Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video we're going to be talking about my initial impressions about Act 6.3 bosses. Uh, so we did do an initial completion stream yesterday, it took about 3 hours, so each quest takes about half an hour to clear more or less. Uh, I wasn't using any boost, but I was using uh, Suicide Mastery, so keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, so uh, we did manage our way through. Overall, the first impressions aren't too bad. Uh, it's not an easy content at all. Uh, but today we're going to be taking more of a look at the boss fights. And then I will make a separate video about each quest or chap and stuff like that uh, later on. But yeah, this time we're going to be solely focusing on the boss fights only. And so first off, first boss is Medusa. So this Medusa has pretty much like 3-4 kind of like most noteworthy nodes, which is do you bleed, buffet, uh, bleed vulnerability and explosive personality. Ironically, explosive personality typically is a node that you do welcome in any fight uh, for most part, but in this case it actually makes it a lot harder. Uh, so I do think it's a quite well-designed boss. Uh, it There is that 5% buffet that changed from 15%, likely for it not to be able to be cheesy with void i suppose uh but do you bleed uh under most kind of circumstance i absolutely hate that node i hate any nodes that uh basically restrict your damage output to very specific conditions uh however when you combine it with like bleed vulnerability you can definitely see where they were going for and when you put it on a final boss not randomly hidden in some quest or have an entire lane of that i don't think it's all that bad so for uh I'd say it's a fairly well-designed boss. I definitely don't have any kind of like too negative of memories about uh, taking her on. And uh, I do have to say that in this chapter, I don't think there's any boss like we had Mr. Sinister before in 6.2 or Champion Boss in 6.26. All of them are doable and all of them are workable. And uh, basically you can just get in there, do your best. It, you, There's no complete nonsense bosses that is what i'm trying to say as far as it goes for best options uh i would actually say that if you have a fairly highly ranked gwenpool she probably is the best option because you can end the weight you can ignore that auto block after 50 hits she does do good bleed damage and it would be a fairly straightforward fight using your gwenpool so that would be one of my first suggestions uh, then moving on obviously we have symbiote supreme who can do fantastic job uh, by nullifying all those buffs uh, explosive personality actually gives him a bit of a benefit in this case as well and yeah symbiote supreme uh, does seem to be a fantastic option against this medusa and as well as nick fury now with nick fury you do have to be careful because when you enter your second life your fury activates and if buffet uh, node uh, eats that up you basically can't get it back so you do have to be careful over there uh, but still you don't even have to kind of like try too hard to enter that uh second life if you will because you can just spam heavy attacks thus ignoring medusa's auto block ability and explosive personality putting those inner bleeds on they still do damage as well and uh, just chip her down that way uh, additionally i did try out blade uh, with some immediate uh, medium level success basically relying on parry heavy and then dropping level ones or level threes as and when i can uh, so any kind of good bleeder will do decent uh, but you kind of will have to probably emphasize on your playstyle of parry heavy for a large portion of the fight like warlock will be great uh, in that case as well uh, but yeah just be careful of that explosive personality and medusa's auto block other than that you should be pretty much fine obviously you do have to kind of designate uh, and before you enter in the quest you already need to keep in mind that you will need some bleeders on your team in order to be able to finish it but yeah, uh, all in all, I think it's a fairly solid boss design. There's nothing too annoying. You just need to play a specific way in a very specific set of champions. Moving on, we have Nick Fury. And Nick Fury is a really cool design. I love that fight. 
base idea is it is fully immune nick fury with empowered immunity where unless you have a bleed immune champion you don't really want to strike uh his block so uh first things first obviously omega red is a fantastic option uh, but this fight can be done with pretty much any champion on your roster and if you inflict some debuffs that can actually be beneficial because the game plan here what you want to execute is a fairly uh, straightforward one as well you won't keep constantly pushing him from level 2 to level 2 relying on your dash back intercepts uh and yeah that's about it because level 2 uh, doesn't give him any tactical charges it's easier to evade and uh yeah, so I did most of uh, this fight with Goldpool. Didn't manage to sneak in a solo. We died towards the end. Uh, but yeah, Goldpool did it just fine. That means uh, many champions would be perfectly capable of doing this fight. And this fight certainly does seem more skill intensive rather than a roster uh, demanding fight. So I can always appreciate that. I did like this fight. I think it's yeah definitely much more up to you and how well you play rather than uh, whether you have the perfect counter for this fight. And I also think that it will be extremely important for you to actually use that empowered immunity in order to kind of like push him to two bars of power. Therefore champions that have a guaranteed chance to place on a debuff on Nick Fury under your control will be extremely helpful. Like Wasp, I think, can potentially be extremely good champion for this fight. Same with Goldpool was perfect just because every time it dropped a level one, there was a guaranteed stun. So I could count on kind of like an extra power burst over there and so on and so forth. So it's a bit of a head scratcher, but again, for vast majority of the time, this is gonna be much more skill intensive than a roster demanding fight. And yeah, I can definitely appreciate that. And I think this was probably my favorite uh, boss design in 6.3. But now we're moving on to Havoc. So this Havoc has cornered Force of Will, Extinction Protocol, Improved Power Gain and Crumbling Armor. All of those are actually quite important and one by one they eliminate more and more options of uh, kind of champions you want to use against this guy and it doesn't leave you with a whole lot. And uh, yeah, the Crumbling Armor is actually a fairly big issue as well because of improved power gain plus all the other stuff he is going to be getting his specials quicker and if he ever refuses to throw a special attack then your armor buffs are going to be gone and you're going to be suspect to detonation and uh it is a tricky boss uh i probably would say warlock is more than likely one of the better options here uh but uh on the bright side it's a boss that doesn't have any regeneration associated with it and at end of the day largely it's just a havoc uh, so uh, you can always chip him down him being the final boss of the quest means that you can throw all the champions that you have in your team available uh, and even if you can't manage to get a solo because i think it will be in fact quite difficult to do that in here uh, you will get him down and he will not leave kind of a lasting and nonsense impression where you just use revive after revive after revive because uh, yeah anytime you go in up against this guy at the very least uh, before you mess up or before those plasmas will detonate you will be able to deal some damage and chip him down uh, so obviously it's a havoc so we have our typical havoc counters it's worth mentioning that quake doesn't really work against this guy not because of improved power gain uh, but because of uh, immunity to ability accuracy reduction so while you're quaking him he's still gonna be gaining plasma charges and when those detonate they hurt they basically put you out and obviously you also do not want to rely on damage over time debuff champions so that kind of pretty much takes out venom from the equation as one of the best counters uh, but i believe you're still left with a fair chunk guillotine 2099 should be doing fantastic warlock uh, was doing just fine as well and then if somebody has a six star angela that should be quite all right and uh, yeah i don't think this is going to be uh, boss that anybody gets particularly stuck on and uh, there are still kind of like plenty of solutions to this guy and even if you do not have a perfect one you can always kind of uh, bring in any random champion keep trying to push him to level two keep trying to bait out heavy attacks and just deal with him that way uh, ghost can be a worthwhile option as well by being in phase while he detonates his plasma charges 
provided that you do have hood synergy. Uh, but all in all, it's a hammock. Nobody likes fighting hammock, uh, but it's hardly the end of the world. And the node combinations here doesn't really make him complete BS either. Uh, another thing worth pointing out definitely is that these bosses are extremely stacked. They have like 20k attack, close to like 500k health, so they can throw a punch and they can definitely take a punch. And now we have Iron Man Infinity War, uh, the boss of quest number four. And I think it's probably one of the kind of more difficult uh, fights and bosses in here, uh, mainly because of Arc Overlord and the last 15%. I I'll, uh, admittedly didn't take in perfect counters to this guy and had a few issues there. I think I used a couple of revives, uh, but uh, all in all, uh, it's Iron Man Infinity War that's immune to armor break, has enhanced armor up, has improved power gain, which will make life very difficult in the last 15%, and has armor, uh, sorry, has arc overload, and also whose healing can be reversed, which is quite important. But still, I do believe that uh, Void is probably one of the better options against this guy. Hyperion will do just fine. Uh, Captain America Infinity War Human Torch was putting in some serious work with his signature ability as well. Uh, with those uh, passive Nova Flames and the uh, power sting. Uh, so that was working out quite well. So yeah, a Void I did mention. I also do believe that Proxima is probably going to be one of the better solutions for this guy if you have like a 6-star Proxima. Because uh, throughout the course of the fight you can get the 3 missions and then when his health does go lower you can just drop a massive level 2 uh, that will completely bypass the annoyance of last 15%. Uh, but if you do not have Proxima then uh, probably Void is the way to go because you can neutralize that Arc Overload uh, healing. Uh, even though you can't reverse it, it's still uh, good enough to neutralize it. Let those damage over time debuff effects go to work. And then uh, when he's in his last 15%, you can also reverse his power gain and basically just let him tick away from your debuffs. Uh, so you have to get slightly creative against this dude, uh, but Void definitely seems like a perfect option here as well, and I'm sure there are plenty of decent to good options, uh, but because of that uh, increased power gain, his power gain in the last phase is massive. Those 15% you need a game plan for. You can't go in and kind of just wing it against this dude, because the power gain in 15% is going to be huge plus arc overlord is going to give him healing so any chip damage you do and then you die is kind of going to be mitigated and yeah this dude definitely uh, does demand a game plan has to be respected and overall i believe is a fairly good boss design as well because it didn't seem like complete nonsense boss but some things that you have to prepare for and uh, boss for quest number five, we have uh, Mysterio, and Mysterio is one of the more tricky bosses. I believe it. I would probably rank him as uh, the hardest boss uh, around here, or definitely one of the hardest bosses, uh, mainly because Tunnel Vision makes the fight slightly tricky and technical, but it's not end of the world. A Matador is the thing that kind of destroys you, because you only gain a bar of power whenever he throws a special attack. Uh, however, ideally, you typically push him to level 2, and when you do that, uh, he drains your power, so for vast majority of the time, you kind of end up uh, fighting with no power. Also, uh, he also has those nodes from when he was introduced, when uh, if he is at uh, three poison gas charges, you receive a poison debuff. So you kind of want to use a poison immune champion, otherwise it's going to be very tricky kind of like a uh, fight where you have to keep aggressive and make sure he throws plenty of special attacks, which might not always be that easy. Uh, so poison immune champions uh, or Captain America with skill, uh, champion on the team and max signature ability will kind of be a good uh, way to go. Uh, he is also armor break immune and uh, yeah, he has enhanced visibility which gives him 50% more power gain and there's quite a lot kind of going on. Also in his base 
kit, he obviously has immunity to ability accuracy reduction. Uh, so yeah, it's a fairly tricky opponent, uh, and that level 1 is also quite tricky to evade, so quite often you're going to take it in a block, which is going to do a lot of block damage. Uh, but on the bright side, again, he doesn't have any kind of like inherent healing abilities, so he's a boss that you can kind of pretty much just throw your entire uh, attack team on and kind of chip away at him and get him eventually down as i mentioned before you want to be looking at poison immune champions like hyperion is a really good counter to this guy just uh spam those heavy attacks and yeah <laughs> have a decent go at it and uh, then you have captain america infinity war who can take a lot of damage in the block which makes him ideal for this but overall i do feel that mysterio is in fact uh, a well-designed boss that's hard to fight it presents a challenge but not complete roadblock not complete like B mr sinister fiasco bs uh so uh yeah i don't mind uh mysterio too much obviously i don't enjoy fighting him but i do think that he makes for a good boss in 6.3 and that pretty much leaves us only with the final boss of quest 6 which surprisingly is captain america infinity war i don't think anybody expected that so anyways he has crit me with your best shot uh, so basically only critical hits do damage uh, then he has destructive feedback which is a node from 624 where he kind of stores the damage that we have done to him but I think there is a very interesting interaction with Crypt maybe your best shot because uh, whenever destructive feedback feedback was actually active i don't think he took any damage at least he didn't take any lump sum of damage afterwards when i fought him initially then he has unlimited power which basically just gives him a bunch of furies electric fluctuations which kind of discounts robots from this fight uh, which is not the biggest deal and yeah your buffs uh, expire a lot quicker uh, so it's nothing kind of too special the one note that does change everything though is uh surging vengeance uh which basically makes sure that he's only going to throw his special attacks in a sequence special one first time special two second time and then he's going to go up to level three and then the cycle starts all over again and uh yeah if you kind of like shoot past special one initially then he's gonna go straight to level three as well so that's something to keep in mind so they are the specials you want to bait out in exactly that order otherwise he's just gonna know not going to throw anything aside from level 3 and that kind of makes this fight a lot more difficult uh, one champion that can probably solo this fight is ghost if you have hood synergy because you can tank the special threes aside from that uh, corvus was doing just fine uh, but again this is a boss where you can pretty much use any champion uh, ideally somebody that has high crit rate or guaranteed crits to make sure you do more damage and ability to tank uh, special threes is super important uh, so iceman potentially could do really well uh, ghost is a definitely a favorite option here uh, but once again you can use pretty much any champion at least to chip him down a bit and other than that the fact that he is eventually can throw some level threes and the fact that you can only do damage with crits it is a fairly straightforward fight and a surprising final boss for 6.3 uh once again i thought it was just a placeholder initially when i saw beta but no uh, they actually left him in there uh so yeah not too bad of a boss nothing too nightmarish and with that, my overall thoughts about 6.3 uh, quest bosses are quite positive. They are extremely stacked. They have like 500k health, 20k attack, which uh, immediately makes all of them tricky by themselves. The node combinations are hard, are difficult, are challenging, but there are no huge fiascos like we had with Mr. Sinister. Also, there is no equivalent to the champion boss. Uh, where none of the bosses are remotely as difficult and what's kind of most important all of these bosses do require you to have options in your roster but they do not demand some 100 specific counters or answers where only two or three champions are fit to fight them and to top it all off 
you can pretty much use any champion for most of these bosses maybe aside from uh, medusa where you need a bleeder specifically and chip away at them so even if you don't have a great counter you will be able to take them down eventually even if it costs you some items and revives and uh, yeah so i definitely do uh, like that i think the bosses are overall success and uh, hopefully this is the kind of design we can see going forward from kabam uh, yeah, that will pretty much do for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, hit that sub button, hit all the buttons, and I'm going to catch you guys soon. See ya.